Right now on sunrise, snowy lanes and slick spots. I'll show you a live look at the road so you know what to expect on your morning commute. A bar destroyed in downtown St. Cloud. I got the latest look at the debris and the massive hole left behind as crews try to figure out how that fire started. A tale of two finishes at the Daytona 500. Oh. Crash into the wall, into the air goes Newman. NASCAR driver Ryan Newman rushed to the hospital. An update on his condition after this terrifying crash. Forced out of their homes and now looking for higher ground. Historic flooding swallowing entire communities in Mississippi. And things could get worse before it gets better. And a young girl's mission to change people's mind. There's more than one skin color and not just a peach crayon. How she's coloring outside the lines to make sure everyone feels included. It's Tuesday, February 18th. Care 11 Sunrise starts now. You might want to think about leaving to work early this morning. Mobile 11 is out on the roads tracking some slick conditions. Yeah, that's right. I'm following drive times and spotting any trouble areas and helping you get to work on time. Because guys, if you're coming from Monticello right now, it's well over an hour commute to get to Maple <laughs> oh. Grove. It's horrible. Yeah, yeah. dealing with the Long snow time. we got yesterday. A, a little more snow than most people thought. Most people except you, Sven. Well, no, every, but nobody expected seven inches oh, in, in okay. New Ulm. Oh, okay. Trying to give you uh, props. Yeah, it's a little <laughs> We had some little mesoscale bursts that uh, computers just can't handle and uh, really difficult to forecast because it just sort of developed yesterday afternoon. But in those bursts of snow to the south, boy, 7.8 inches in New Ulm, 5.5 in St. James, Otsego. And that came in just a couple of hours, too. Uh, close to the metro, not nearly as bad, but again, it came in a short period of time, so that caused issues. About two inches for most of the metro. Some western suburbs picked up three inches, though, of snow. Clouds breaking up overhead right now, so we're going to see temperatures dip here into the teens. We've just slipped down to 19. Feels like it's 7, though. We'll get back up to about 20 with some of that sunshine today, but it is going to be a cold night tonight. It's definitely better than it was last night, but we're still seeing some crashes. Even this jackknife semi that's been here for well over an hour now along the stretch of 94 uh, westbound on Highway 95. Crews have been uh, trying to clear that out of the way, but it's been really jamming up traffic. If you're waking up in the Hudson, Wisconsin area coming towards uh, 94 in the Woodbury area, another big slowdown and a few crashes. In fact, along 94 eastbound. Now this is complete opposite side of the metro in the northwest corner. If you're coming from the Rogers, Monticello area bumper to bumper traffic again. A few crashes popped up there. Let's give you a check of the map. Uh, seeing some significant slowdowns in the North Metro 694 100 southbound through the Crystal area and then even 169 through New Hope seeing some slowdowns as well. But uh, uh, some of the bigger spots, like I said, 94 from Hudson and this is the biggest as I mentioned 94 from Monticello all the way to Maple Grove. Well over an hour commute this morning. So if this is your route. Maybe you can stay home, work from home or maybe even leave later, but even 101 starting to jam up as well. All right, let's toss things out to Kaya Edwards, who's live in Mobile 11 this morning. How are conditions looking for you, Kaya? Good morning. We are on 494 right now going east Invergrove Heights area, and I can tell you 494 so far for us has been smooth sailing. You can see there's not as many cars out here right now. The roads have just been wet and it's been pretty much the same case on 494 uh, more toward Bloomington. The worst spot I have seen, however, was 100 going southbound near Edina. There were a lot of lanes covered with snow ice, so definitely some slick spots. Of course, the message we'll be sharing all morning is to be careful on the road especially bridges and overpasses. So when you're getting on and off the highway, just take a little extra time to get uh, get on those parts of the road. There is not a snow emergency in effect in Minneapolis or St. Paul. Normal parking rules apply. However, you are going to uh, notice how snow covered they are as you leave from your house. Now, next half hour, we're going over the crash numbers. Last night, we saw a lot of them, and we're going to give you the exact numbers coming up just next half hour. It's a gaping hole. It just will never be the same. A massive fire leaves a gaping hole this morning in the middle of downtown St. Cloud. It destroyed an iconic late night staple that stood for decades. Ellery McCardle is live in St. Cloud. Ellery, do we know what caused this fire just yet? Uh, no, guys, they don't know the cause of the fire right now, uh, as of now. But, uh, you know, crews say it's going to take them several days before they can actually get inside and get a really close look to try to figure out what caused the fire. But if you look behind me, I mean, look 
at the massive amounts of debris that's left behind. You can see it's all fenced off this corner of Fifth and Germain. You can see the high piles of debris. Uh, when you're standing here on this corner, you can still smell the smoke in this part of downtown. And just about an hour ago, I saw some fire crews as well. Uh, still out here doing work here. Now, when we show you the video from yesterday, though, I mean, the fire was just massive. St. Cloud Fire says that it all started in the basement and it was hard to put out the flames because there was only one way in and out of that basement. So by the time they got there, the fire spread up the walls. You know, this fire is a big blow to downtown because I don't know if you remember, but a couple of years ago, the Herbergers closed in downtown and now this bar is destroyed. So the Chamber of Commerce is really hoping something good can come from all of this. Now, like I said, it's going to take investigators a few days, uh, several days, I should say, to get back in there to try and determine what caused this fire. Meantime, today at 10 o'clock, we're going to get an update from St. Cloud's mayor. So uh, be watching for updates on your uh, CARE 11 social media feeds or CARE 11 app, and then I'll be live here on CARE 11 at 11 as well. Yeah, Guys. curious to know what the mayor is going to say. Thank you, Ellery. This place meant a lot to our sunrisers. Hundreds of you sharing memories on our CARE 11 Facebook page. Gabe saying, wow, I'll miss that place. And Jen says, this is so sad and for the surrounding businesses around them too. We're going to check out more of your comments coming up in the next half hour. You can join the conversation using the hashtag sunrisers. Breaking news this morning, a shakeup in the race for the White House. Billionaire and former mayor of New York City, Michael Bloomberg, just qualified for the Democratic presidential debate in Las Vegas tomorrow. A new poll shows he has 19 percent support nationally, leading behind, um, that's right behind, leading Bernie Sanders. And Bloomberg officially entered the race late. That was in November. Now here's a look at today's other top stories in your morning rush. An Eden Prairie couple is back in the U.S. after their cruise ship was quarantined from the coronavirus. Amy Ellefson and Ron Hildeen were on a Diamond Princess cruise off the coast of Japan. Now they are at a California Air Force base waiting out another two weeks in quarantine before being able to go home. So far, they have not gotten sick. The DNR is reminding you to pick up after yourself if you go out on a lake for ice fishing. Conservation officers are out looking for people who left trash on Lake O'Dowd. The person left everything from a couch to a Christmas tree. With the ice house removal date approaching, the DNR says anything you take out on the ice with you should be removed when you leave. Lawmakers are working to cut down on crime on the light rail. Yesterday, Republicans proposed a bill that would add transit enforcement agents to trains who would make sure rule breakers were banned. There would also be stiffer penalties for gangs. Earlier this month, Democrats proposed decriminalizing people who don't pay to ride the light rail. Pier 1 is filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. The struggling retailer has already said it's closing about 450 stores. Pier 1 is closing 12 stores in Minnesota and 6 in Wisconsin. The good news about declaring bankruptcy is it gives Pier 1 time to find a new buyer. And that's your Tuesday Morning Rush. In this morning's digital dive, a horrific crash during the Daytona 500 is everyone talking this morning. NASCAR driver Ryan Newman is trending ac across the country and not for good reason. Yesterday, as the cars turn into their final lap, Ryan Newman was leading the pack, but then gets bumped. His car then rolls, flips, and then he even goes airborne, and it ends with a scary, fiery crash. Newman skidded across the line on his roof. He got fourth place and emergency crews worked to get the 42 year old driver from his vehicle. NASCAR releasing the statement in part saying that Ryan Newman was being treated at Halifax Medical Center and that his injuries are serious, but thankfully they're not life threatening. A driver Danny Hamlin, who got first place in the race yesterday, tweeted, we're praying for you, Ryan. Dale Earnhardt Jr. sending his thoughts and prayers as well. And even President Trump, who was the grand marshal of the event, said he's a great and brave NASCAR driver. And like I said, we got a lot of comments comments coming in our sunrisers sending their well wishes and prayers to his family but this just goes to show just how dangerous you guys this sport can be pretty mm -hmm. incredible yeah that video you just can't stop watching it it's I know. crazy it's amazing to think like a 2000 pound vehicle like just mm -hmm. like a feather in the wind is the one that goes right. airborne like that right. yeah. i'm surprised more cars didn't i mean he like hit another car right. it was incredible mm -hmm. that more didn't crash too They're going by 200 miles an hour it's yeah. so right. fast so, skilled yeah. drivers all right, Sven, let's go to you now with our one thing weather. Well, we're uh, seeing cooler air move in today. Temperatures are going to be slipping here through the teens. We'll come back to about 20 this afternoon with sunshine breaking out, but uh, it's going to be headed below zero overnight time. We're talking about the cold, but also a big warm up ahead too.
And if you normally take 94 and you're coming from the Rogers, Monticello area, St. Michael, this is what your commute looks like this morning if you're traveling towards the Twin Cities. Yeah, not good. A lot of crashes. Road conditions pretty slick. They're partially covered road conditions on a few highways in interstate still around the metro. This is not far from highway. 101 this morning. So if this is your route again, drive times there are increasing. I'll have an update on them coming up in a few minutes. A little wine with your breakfast. Grab your stemware in 20 minutes. We're taking you to wine tasting to one of Minnesota's most popular wineries. Then one little girl on a mission and it's starting in your child's crayon box. How she's coloring a light around a problem seen in every classroom. Plus massive flooding in Mississippi forcing people from their homes. The devastation as water rises and what officials are telling people to do this morning.